for the first talk, we're going to invite Vicky Spratt and Carmel Dickinson. So Vicky and Carmel are going to talk about the dream of home ownership. Uh, Vicky Spratt is a journalist and she's the author of Tenants and her 2016 campaign, Make Renting Fair, led to letting fees in England and Wales being banned. And she's going to be interviewed by Carmel, Carmel Dickinson. She's heading our partnerships at Vespod, but she's a financial feminist and she's also empowering female women entrepreneurs um, making more money with their businesses. So that's going to be the first talk. And then we're going to have a talk about challenging um, our consumerist culture to better our planet. So all about consumerism. And we're going to invite Aja Barber. She's a writer and fashion consultant holding those in power to account by campaigning for sustainable, inclusive fashion industry. And then she's going to be interviewed by Mira Kumar. Mira is our podcast editor, so you're going to see most of the Vespa team on stage today, which is pretty cool. She's a freelance editor, producer, and presenter, and she created shows for Sony, the BBC, lots of different amazing companies, and she recently won a British podcast award. Um, Carmel and Vicky, all yours. Hi, everyone. <laughs> God, this is exciting. Um, I've just been telling Vicky, I've just met her, and I was just telling her that this book, I went into it with a bit of trepidation because full disclosure I'm a landlord but I'm also <laughs> I'm also a tenant um I became a landlord accidentally in 2000 just after 2008 thanks to a northern rock mortgage a cheating ex-partner who went AWOL um and a crash and um you know what we saw the big recession coming and I couldn't afford my house so I went into this thinking oh god this is going to make me feel really guilty and evil and uh all the things and but actually what this book really helped me with and taught me and I think and I would urge people in this room to try and get your head around it is that this is a system that's broken and it's rigged especially women like us um and so and it made me feel a little bit better about all that complex emotional journey that I've been on with being a landlord being a homeowner and being a tenant so I think we should start there if we can, if that's okay. You've just also written an article saying things were bad for women, but Liz Trust has just made it worse. Thanks, Liz. Um, so could you just sort of talk about that, like the implications of this growth plan and also kind of touching on what you talk about in the book? And I think it very much refers to me about the, the housing gender gap as well. Oh, well, thank you for such a generous introduction. I'm going to have to be really disciplined and not interview you because I want to talk loads about with the drink, with the drink. <laughs> um, well, I think actually, you know, your story really speaks to, to what we're facing now, which is going to be very painful for a lot of people. And I think um, Liz Truss is being particularly disingenuous. I don't know if anyone's seen the interview she's given about what's happened with mortgage rates, uh, which in short have spiked because of the way the so-called growth plan was delivered shutting the OBR our independent watchdog out of the process um, spooking the markets um, and effectively meaning that mortgage rates have had to go up but she keeps saying in interviews that the the Bank of England have, have put the, the bank rate up which they haven't done and they, they obviously have been doing that over the last year but that's not what's happened in the last two weeks and um, it's it's a really really scary time I think to have a leader who is so reckless um but but the reason that it will hurt women i think is is really important to unpack um there is a gender housing gap um there's a really really brilliant um independent kind of campaigning organization called the women's budget group and a couple of years ago what they did for me was look at data across the country of whether it was affordable for women to buy or rent homes and what they found is that there is nowhere nowhere in this country where it is affordable for a woman on her own on an average income to buy or rent um yeah let that sink in i think you yeah. put it there it's not yes yeah, not you guys that's the way it is so so in the same way that we we have a gender pay gap we do have a gender housing gap and of course the two are linked because on average women earn less than men um so it's more difficult to save. Women are more likely to have caring responsibilities too. Um, and, and it's created this situation where I think access to housing is really, really unequal. And then if you do have a mortgage right now and you're coming to the end of a fixed rate, rates have gone to 6%. Like I think the average rate for a two-year fixed deal pre 
growth plan was about 4.75. Um, at the end of last week, it was close to 6%. Um, if you're remortgaging and you're a woman on your own, um, that's that's going to be a big jump. I just remortgaged. And luckily, before all of this kicked off, but I mean, that was just pure fluke. It could have been a few weeks later, and I genuinely don't know if I'd be able to meet my monthly repayments. Um, and of course, men are impacted by this too. But women will really, really f feel the burn. And we, for the third time in our country's history, have a woman in number 10. But I think what we're seeing is that that doesn't necessarily mean that she has women's best interests at heart. Um, and I think for anyone who rents, what's happening with mortgage rates is also going to be impactful. Because what I'm hearing is that landlords, not all landlords are evil. And I'm... <laughs> um, I was going to do an evil laugh there, but I won't. <laughs> But and, and, and this is also understandable, right? Landlords are really worried too because many of them, like yourself, are in situations where they actually don't have that much give in their budgets. Um, so they're passing on costs to their tenants. I've interviewed people in the last few weeks who've had 30 or 40% rent hikes, but people's wages aren't going up at the same rate. Um, yeah, it, it's a really, it's, um, it, writing tenants was... Um, kind of the product of like five years of work traveling around the country interviewing people about the housing crisis. And I thought, okay, yeah, things can't possibly get much harder for people. And I, I genuinely now don't really know what to say when I'm interviewing people um, and, and hearing about their rent hikes because what can you do? You either pay it or you leave. Rents are soaring. House prices have also been going up and up and up in recent years. And I think... Um, you know, we talk a lot about the cost of living crisis and we're focusing quite rightly on the pinch points of energy bills, your food shop. But ha housing costs are so out of control as well. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to you out there, um, obviously my mortgage on my house has gone up and I, I don't want to put my tenants rent up you know and, and ultimately next year I, I am selling that house um and that has been my you know that will be the equity for my for my home um for my first well it's not my first home it's my second home but I in a weird way I do see this as my first home but um yeah and it's like looking at like but looking at my budget can I can I cover that deficit so I think that that I, I think it's important that we don't want to be too neg negative. This is a positive impact moment. But um, so what can people do in the room? Obviously, that's quite scary stuff to hear. Like what sort of, <laughs> and you, I know you don't give financial advice. Um, there's some financial advisors here. Um, but um, what kind of resources and, and, and where can people kind of go to make themselves just feel a little bit more informed about what's happening and what they possibly can do? Yeah, and I think it is important to say as well. Like, I, I think, I think we're living through a really um, sort of game, game changing historical moment, and it is very serious, and it's um, going to be really challenging for a lot of people. But I, you know, even seeing it every day as a journalist and leaving London, meeting people in really difficult situations. What I would say, and I hope this comes across in tenants, I think it does, um, is, is I actually remain incredibly hopeful and you even talk about like love in terms of like planning and stuff it's really nice to, to hear that emotion added to it yeah I mean we probably, we probably don't have time to get into it today but um, I'm really glad you picked up on that because I think there is you know there is this philosophical idea of, about the importance of, of love in politics and compassion um, and I think we probably could do with some of that right now. But that's what I see, you know, like um, the other week I was in the Lake District doing a story about the problem with second home ownership there. Again, not evil if you have a second home, um, but of course there is an impact on a community when its housing stock is, is being taken out of the market by people who don't live there all the time. And I met this lady called Anne, who is 80 years old. And in her community, she has been working to make sure there's still affordable housing for people who work and live in the Lake District. She's been doing that her whole life. And I think I, I meet people. I'm so, you know, one of the best things about my job is to meet people like her who are just taking the situation into their own hands and doing something about it. And I think we all we all have the capacity to do something about it, even when things feel incredibly hopeless. Um, and I, that, that might look different for everybody, but there is always something you can do in your community or someone you can help. 
Um, so that would be the first thing that I would say. Like, Anne, I just want to spend all my time with Anne now. She is incredibly, incredibly inspo. Um, but it, it's, if you're a renter and your landlord is is trying to put your rent up, um, you actually can negotiate and you can resist that and you can push back. You don't just have to accept it. Um, the housing charity Shelter has really, really great resources and template letters on their website. So I would direct people there. The mortgages stuff is, is obviously far more complicated. Um, and as a journalist, I definitely cannot give anybody advice about what to do with their money. Um, but I would speak to a, a mortgage broker like ASAP if you're in that situation, um, because I think rates probably will will go a bit higher. And and what's going to happen with house prices is, is also not necessarily straightforward. And I think getting ahead of it and speaking to an expert is is the best thing you can do. And write to your MP. That, sorry, that's the last thing I'll say. It's, it's so obvious that I think it almost gets forgotten. But like we live in a democracy and I, I used to work in an MP's office and they get so many letters and somebody in that office reads all of them. Um, all of the emails get read. Everything gets responded to. And I do think it makes a difference because if an issue comes up enough, they will realise that it's hurting their constituents and they will raise it. And actually what we've seen with the Conservative Party in the last week is that, you know, people do challenge their prime minister um, if, if they think they're going to lose their seats. So that is another lever that we have that I think people often forget exists. I think this is the time now really to start getting political um, and, and actually doing something. I mean, I'm I think I'm quite political, but that's just kind of me ranting in front of the television or on Twitter. <laughs> but now I feel like reading this and a lot more of other stuff, I, I really feel like I want to get involved. Um, and then so so what's the next, you know, in, in two minutes? But have you got a next? I feel like you need to write another chapter to this now, considering everything that's going on. Is that is that where you're keeping going on your because this must have been an incredible journey. So what's next for you? Funny you should say that. I'm writing, um, so the paperback of Tenants will be out in March. I'm writing um, a chapter on everything that's happened in the last sort of month or so, which will almost definitely be out of date by March. Um, <laughs> so who knows what happens after that? But I think it's really, you know, I, with, with the book, what I really wanted to do is have, uh, you know, I write however many articles a week, um, but they often feel, we write them, they go in the paper, the papers out they go on the internet into the sort of ether and then we all move on and we're on to the at the moment it is crisis crisis politics so we're on to the next thing and I think I really wanted the book to kind of be a historical document that could um, bear witness to the housing crisis that has been getting worse and worse in recent years and sort of trace how politicians have um, exacerbated it and not done much and I, I hope that the updated chapter for the paperback can do the same for this Liz Truss moment. Um, and then there is another book coming, um, which will be slightly different. And actually we'll talk, unpack some of the stuff about compassion a bit more. Um, it's gonna be a collection of essays. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose just the day job, housing correspondent reporting on um, what's happening and trying to make sense of it for people. I think journalism has a, has a really important role to play in all of this. and. That's actually really um, been been brought home for me in the last few weeks. Uh, I never thought I would have to film a five minute explainer on guilt yields, but here we are. <laughs> I think that's what's really great about your writing. I do urge everyone to kind of go read that recent article of Refinery Twenty Nine. You know, your your writing is very much like this is. I'm going to swear if that's okay. This is shit, but this is kind of why. And then this is what you can do. And I think that's what I'm trying to say to everybody in the room. Like read a book about the economy, read this book, understand, because I know that it's incredibly hard and you'll get some amazing tips and, and, and hints today and you'll speak to some amazing advisors, but just also to try to remember that the, the system is it's just, they make it even harder for us. So it's really important to inform yourself and Vicky's writing is, is really good for that. So I know we're out of time, are we? Yeah. Okay. That was neatly tied up. I did, honestly, 15 minutes doesn't do it justice, but we, we got there, I hope. Um, but Vicky's staying around signing some books um, and the book is in the bookshop. So, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.